Welcome to Vajuka Enterprises YouTube channel. Welcome heels and villains to Vajuka Enterprises YouTube channel. As always, I'm your host Vajuka, and I am continuing my quest to interview all the game masters of tabletop role-playing games that will allow me. Um, today I am interviewing the only person I know at the moment from Wales, I believe, who is which would make him Welsh. And the, like all my videos. I don't know why I have to explain this, but all my videos aren't really safe for young ears. I don't restrict people's vocabulary. <laughs> Anyways, I'm rambling on. I will let my guest introduce themselves. <laughs> yeah, so uh, on the intertubes, I am known as Private Investor Gamer, part-time streamer, part-time GM. Very, compared to a lot of your guests, I'm very virgin to the whole GM idea. I've only been doing, I've, I've been doing it on and off for the past 10 years. So a lot of people have a lot more experience running campaigns than I do, but I run what I like to call odd RPGs, RPGs no one's ever heard of. So how did you get into role playing games? I started off when I was in uh, comprehensive school, or as you might know it as high school. Um, I, me, and my, me and my friend Matthew, were, we were bullied quite a lot. And we were offered a safe haven with our, one of our favorite history teachers to come play D and D. It was a safe place for, uh, not to throw insults out, but for us nerds to to congregate and feel safe during lunch hours. I started off as a two-handed wood elf ranger. My friend was a mage because he likes blowing things up. And it started mainly from there. I took a good four-year hiatus from that uh, after school because I was doing college and university at the same time, didn't have time for it. And then uh, after starting a board games club in my local town of Staffordshire, I ended up getting invited to play uh, an RPG called Hackmaster, which if anyone knows what Hackmaster is, it's like D&D, but uh, it's dialed to 11 in terms of unfairness. Um, and, that, and it started all from there. This is where I started opening the doors to other RPGs like Dark Heresy and such. So you mentioned that you play a lot of oddball systems. So this should make this question rather interesting. What systems have you played? I've played uh, Hackmaster. I played D&D 3.5 and 5th. I've played Dark Heresy. I've played, they've come from beneath the sea and they become, uh, uh, came from beyond the grave. There are a few ones that I can't remember the names of, but they're, they're the main ones that come off the top of my head when it comes to, when it comes to my experience with or RPG uh, style systems. Are there any systems you refuse to run? Hackmaster, after a long while, because it's, uh, everything is percentile in that game. I start with a low percentile chance when from level one. There's, there's no room for new, new characters, especially if you're late into a campaign. And it's very hard to play catch-up as well. So if you were to come in, they're going to start you at level 7. Learning how to how everything works in Hackmaster, unforgivable. So I'd probably say Hackmaster and Dark Heresy for the same reason. It's the amount of unfairness in those systems. And they're outdated, that's why it's unfair. They're the two I wouldn't run anymore. Other, on the other side of that, are there any systems you enjoy running? Yeah, so there's a new system called They Came From Beyond. So you got, they came from beyond the, uh, uh, beneath the sea. They became from beyond the grave, which what I like to call cinematic RPGs. So it's not about combat. It's all about storytelling. Uh, the, the rules are very loose. The, the GM is essentially called a director. It's like playing through a, a tabletop movie. I love running that because it's fair for newcomers. It's easy to understand. Uh, you, you're not dying all the time. You're not stuck in combat. Whenever you are in combat, it's always fair. There's, there's balancing within it. Uh, the, the director essentially gets to say how difficult the game's going to be. I love it. I know you haven't been running games. In the, I know you haven't been running games long, but do you have any common house rules at this time? Right, so there's a few that I run, especially if there's kids involved. If I'm playing D and D fifth edition, for example, uh, I use a D six hit system. So instead of having to roll a D twenty and trying to calculate the hits, 
I'll say one, two, three misses, four, five, six hits. I like running that with kids. Um, it gets them into the RPG uh, system. And then once they get a bit older or if they get a bit more understand with the rules, I'm more, I, I, you know, I change from that to the actual system. So I like running that. One house rule I always run is with skills. Yeah, I like my storytelling. So I'll, I'll give bonuses. I'll give a lot of bonuses due to the situation. If someone's role playing a character that can climb, for example, they're about to climb up a wall and their character knows how to climb very well. I'll give them a lot of bonuses, with, which aren't typically part of d and I'll give them bonuses for climbing if they know if their character is known for climbing. So do you have any tales of the players completely surprising you that you would like to discuss? Yeah, there's one that I, I'd, like to, I'd like to mention. Which, uh, actually, there's two. There's two. First one would be Dark Heresy. And this is probably the funniest story. I've, uh, one of the two funniest stories I've heard in a long time. And it, it was my campaign. Dark Heresy, where they were making um, a plan to take down a group of evil librarians. Uh, I think it was librarians. And the 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 psyker and essentially what is a the 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 dark heresy version of a police officer sitting down discussing the plan. The psyker decided to use he had a, he had an ability where he could throw his voice or or make his voice appear out of somewhere else. So he decided to demonstrate this in front of this police officer who knows nothing of the war but is very interested. Um, critically failed his uh, psyker check. Critically failed his warp check. Which means not only did he did did he make everyone in the pu- in, in, in the bar uh, scared, everyone in that bar then thought things were coming out. So there's shotgun blasts going everywhere. This officer ran up to his bedroom in this hotel, locked himself in. The psycho then passed his will check, went up to go check on him. And this psycho smokes, by the way, so he carries a lighter in his chest pocket. Um, he kicked open the door to see if the police officer was okay. The police officer then blind fired and hit him dead in the chest where his light was, made the psyker explode. I, I, I had to go get a drink after that. That was hilarious, but it, everything, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. The second one I'd like to mention is during Hackmaster. They were on a, a hunting, they were hunting for like pelts to try to sell for a certain weapon or, or gear. Um, and they came across a bugbear. And anyone that doesn't know what a be- bugbear is, it's a heavily armored bear that wields a mace sometimes, or in this case, is super fast and intelligent. Uh, the bugbear one-shotted uh, the cleric, knocking him out. Didn't, didn't kill him, knocked him out, it threw him into a bush where everyone else was running away. And this turned into like a tower and inferno situation because the uh, mage decided to set the entire forest ablaze outside the Frandor's keep. Uh, the, they managed to escape, but the bugbear was still about. The cleric managed to make a will save to get back up in a tower in Inferno. This bugbear then turned around to run towards him, and he's running through like a, a forest tunnel of just fire and death. Minimal amount of hit points. He then has to make a choice of trying to fight this bugbear, wouldn't work, or jumping down a riverbank. And uh, if he was to ro- fill his roll for the riverbank, dead, gone, because you can, you, can you, can, you can go down once. But if you're in recovery and you go down again, you die. So his, he decided to take a running leap down this uh, riverbank with this bugbear on fire chasing him behind him and managed to make his save to hit the bottom of the riverbank where he was found by the guards. This completely ruined my campaign, by the way, because I then had to make up an entire court system as to what the fuck they just did. <laughs> and it was hilarious. They're my two favorite stories when it comes to running a, uh, an RPG. <laughs> Every, there's, there's no such thing as a fun good story. It's all fun bad stories. Do you have any tales of everything going according to plan that you would like to share? Uh, my group is a bunch of drunken misfits. There's not a lot of those. I think my favorite one is uh, playing D and D three point five. I think it was. Uh, we all got ca- they they all got captured on a essentially what was a slave ship. One guy was set, so they were all, all rowing, um, according to the Slave Masters. And he got, he got one of the players got buddy-buddy with the, the guards. So, and he, he made a search, see if there's anything around he could give to the guards to try bribe him. Made his search roll, like, critically past it. So I said, he, you know, 
if you've got a, a ruby in your, in your underwear, essentially, you can give this to the guard. So he gave it to the guard. The guard gave him a knife to defend him against so on that. Um, he, he claimed to the guard, oh, he doesn't look trustworthy. Can I have like a butter knife in order to stab him in case he turns into a bit of a dick? So the guard gives him the knife. This player was a, a thief. So he managed to use the knife to lockpick his handcuffs, lockpick the guy next to him and the rest of the party because they were all sat together. And they managed to storm the entire boat. This ruined, again, this, this is a good story, but it ruined my campaign because they meant to land somewhere else. They, they, they caused a mutiny and sailed the ship and I had to try to direct them to where they were meant to be going. So that was technically going right, but for the players, not for me, because I needed them to uh, behave, but they didn't behave, so I had to make things up on the fly. <laughs> Let's go find Do you have, as the penultimate question, do you have any advice for the fellow game masters out there? Yeah, time for talking, but control talking. So there's a lot of times where you'll find one player, and usually it's me if I'm playing, if I'm not a GM and I'm playing, I'm the talker, where I just, I, I just, I'm very loud. You need to give almost initiative on, on talking. So you need to say, right, you've got the talking stick, pass it along once you're done, take it in turns talking, because otherwise you're going to have one person playing the game and talking through the game, creating the story. No one else is going to enjoy it. So control your environment, control your players. The second tip I would say is if you are reading through a pre-made campaign and you play with new players and you, you know for a fact it's going to be quite difficult at certain points, tone it down. You know, if a, if a goblin's level three at that point and they can't quite defeat it, make it a level two. Because um, what you want to be doing first is creating a story, then create the game afterwards. Because when you're playing through a campaign, you want to be telling the story. You don't want to just be going through a, mur you know, a murder machine. So uh, control, your, control your players when they're talking and storytelling. As we end this interview, is there anything you are part of that you would like to shout out? Um, so there's a few things I'd like to shout out. Uh, I, if you want to follow me on, on Twitch, I am Private Investigamer. Uh, just an investigator, but with a gamer at the end. Um, I'm doing another 24-hour live stream because, as you know, mine decided to blow up while playing Valheim. So I will be doing that at some point. Uh, I do have a Discord. I'll, I'll, if you're in my chat, you'll get hit in the face by my Discord links all the time. Um, and I'd like to shout you out for Duke for hosting these uh, questions. So those who are watching, please give him a uh, like and a subscribe. Well, thank you for your time, and I will s see you in a D and D game not too long from now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. I will talk to you then. Take it easy. Have a good night, everyone.